Hey, Dad, today I was wanting to visit with you a little bit about my granddaddy, Dean, who I know from old books and stuff, the Reverend John William Dean. He was a preacher, right? Right. So what did all the kids call call your dad? Papa. Is that right? Yeah, he was Papa and Mama. He died at age 94, and I was just a really young kid at that time, so I don't remember. Uh, how long was he a preacher? Well, since he was about 18. Is that right? From 18 yeah. years old to 94 years old? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he was licensed to preach when he was young. Yes, sir. Then he was later ordained by the church, the Baptist church, to, to preach in 1900. Wow. different times in his preaching career, he had the single churches that he pastored, a few. But in the early years, in terms of the century and before, uh, uh, they had every little community had a church. Yes, sir. And usually, they couldn't afford full-time pastors. So, Preachers would preach one Sunday every month at a different church. Oh, okay. If they preached twice a month, they'd be a half-time church. I see, two if times. If four times a month, they'd be four-time church. So he, uh, he did that. Uh, I've heard him talk about walking to those churches so, from his home. Is that right? And, uh, so just all over... Uh, you know, back in Alabama, the communities every four or five miles, you'd have a little community with a church. And, uh, you know, this Sunday uh, you'd walk over to maybe New Hope right. Baptist Church. Next Sunday you might walk over to Shiloh Baptist Church. <laughs> Some little community, you know, four or five, six miles away. Right. You preach and uh, stay for lunch. Oh, people always invite you out to lunch when you're visiting preaching. Right. And uh, I heard him say one time, he says, uh, you know, that's, that's the time that I had a chance to prove my faith by my works, is eating that chicken. <laughs> <laughs> definitely believe he was called to preach, but uh, I think he had a real gift of, of uh, explaining scripture in a way that people could understand. What do you remember more as his preaching style? Did he have some sort of pulpit style or something like that? Yeah, Papa had a, a style of his own, I think. He, at times he was real spirited. Yes, sir. And got pretty excited about the message. Yeah. But most of the time, his preaching was just expounding on the scriptures and, and uh, explaining in simple terms to the lay people what, what the scriptures meant. I have a testament here that he used many, many times, even after, after I was old enough to remember. Uh, and he placed his finger as an index to his sermon, and every once in a while he'd open the testament and read the script, and he'd close it, and he'd, he'd use that testament. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> even now those pages are stained, and you can visibly tell that's where he camped out from at. The script that he preached from. How was your dad as a disciplinarian? This turn, this turn. Did you ever get in trouble? A few times, but not as many as you would think. Uh, <laughs> Their actions uh, was, wasn't necessarily a, a whipping or a beating. Uh, 
is a look. Yes, sir. And you that you knew that that look. Like <laughs> I'm familiar with that look. I've seen it before. <laughs> now, Dad, he he wrote a couple of books, didn't he? Yes, he, he wrote a couple of books and got his doctor's degree with the thesis. And the title of it was The Lord's Supper. And I think he must have been around four or five years old at that time. Is that right? Yeah. So, but I remember definitely the time he was working on that uh, thesis. Is that right? It was a quiet time around the home. <laughs> you, you didn't make the noise on top of the stage. Well, Dad, talking about the home, obviously you didn't have much as a family, and you had a huge family, and you were going through the Depression. Did you feel like that, I mean, how would you characterize your childhood? Pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> There wasn't too much excitement going on. Uh, we were among many others in the same condition, you know, say nobody had anything. I don't remember those days as being really uh, particularly hard as far as I was concerned, but I'm sure it was hard for our parents. Right. And uh, Did they seem to fret over things? And they didn't fret, no. Uh, and, and I think that's one thing we learned, I learned from my parents, that their dependence on the Lord for what they needed uh, was the basis for their everyday living. Yes, sir. They, they knew that things were beyond their control, and uh, unless it came from the Lord, you know. It wasn't going to come. It wasn't going to come. Wow. But on, um, I remember a lot of times that Papa had written the book. I think he had a thousand copies printed somewhere. Somebody helped him get a thousand copies. I remember all the time he would be completely out of something we needed badly. And, uh, when he'd go to the church, he'd take four or five of those books. Yes, sir. And he'd sell them for a dollar a piece. <laughs> and that would provide money for whatever that need was, you know? Yes, sir. But, and I don't know how long the books lasted, but evidently they must have got him to. Yeah, that's right. Dad, I'm, uh, I can't tell you how proud I am of that heritage. Well, it's a, it's a good heritage, and uh, I was always uh, <clears throat> I was always proud of my dad. But uh, our parents instilled in us good values. They still do. 